This paper not only describes the central accumulation of red blood cell membranes within atherosclerotic plaques, it details how by injecting red blood cells into animals, investigators were able to produce atherosclerotic plaques containing both cholesterol crystals and LDL. So thromboioclots can elegantly explain the constituents of atherosclerosis. I'd like to now take a closer look at the so-called cholesterol crystals themselves. So understand that you're not actually looking at cholesterol crystals here, but rather the spaces where they used to be before they got dissolved in processing. That means another compound that forms crystals of the same shape could actually lead to the same appearance. Enter phytosterols, which is plant versions of cholesterol which are almost identical to cholesterol. These too can form crystals, crystals which are difficult to differentiate from cholesterol crystals. And phytosterols can be easily delivered by red blood cells, given that they are carried also in red blood cell membranes. And while foam cells don't release cholesterol in a form that makes cholesterol, it's, they're only too happy to release these plant-based cholesterols in a free form that can. So at this stage, it's probably not going to surprise you that phytosterols, this fake form of plant cholesterol, is readily detected in atherosclerotic plaques, and that's been shown by numerous research. This is a case report of a 33-year-old male with premature severe atherosclerosis. And when they biopsied his aorta, they found phytosterols, plant sterols. Fortunately for most of us, our bodies can reject most of the plant sterols that we consume, with only about 1% actually being absorbed and assimilated into our tissues. Some people aren't this lucky, however. They have a disease called cytosterolemia, and that means that rather than absorbing only 1%, they can absorb between 15 and 60%. And the consequence of this can be dire. There being one case of a five-year-old dying from sudden cardiac death related to premature atherosclerosis. Premature severe atherosclerosis is the norm in this condition where you absorb too much plant sterol. Despite this, Phytosterols are often lauded for their ability to reduce cholesterol levels. And we have products like this, which deliberately contain added plant sterols, which are promoted for cardiovascular health. Despite there being approximately zero evidence of cardiovascular benefit and plenty of evidence of harm. And this is, I believe, why seed and vegetable oils need to come into the conversation. All these oils contain significant amounts of plant sterols, even olive oil. And it's the plant sterol content of these oils which underpins their lowering of cholesterol in the blood. With this in mind, can you predict what the effects of each of these fats would be on LDL levels? Now, while olive oil and coconut oil are technically not seed oils because they're made from flesh, they're basically the same. They still contain plant sterols. So this study looked at the impact of butter, olive oil, and coconut oil on cholesterol in the blood. And it found that both coconut and olive oil caused a drop in LDL levels, in my opinion, due to the plant sterol content. And this was despite the coconut oil containing 94% saturated fat it still led to a drop in LDL. This is a clear repudiation of the claim that saturated fat increases LDL. 